Congratulations, Tommy Schuyler. You're the first to be featured in a new series called Instagram Picks. Tommy requested 1973's The Baby, and I couldn't resist. So anyway, let's do it. The Baby stars Ruth Roman and Jeanette Corner, Mariana Hill, David Manzi, and is directed by Ted Post. What's up, guys? Welcome to a brand new deep cut review, and I wouldn't be able to do these deep cuts without you fine people. I just recently started a new series called Instagram Picks. I posted uh, a quick little video on Instagram saying, uh, recommend a movie that you want me to review, and uh, if you do it, I will give you a shout out. I had over 100 submissions in that. Thank you all so much. The reason I want to do that is because I, I want to give back to the community, but also there's a lot of movies that I don't know about. And I figured, you know what, I'm not gonna find these movies if I don't go into the audience and ask them, hey, what are some movies I should review? I love older 70s, 60s, 80s. I love older movies in general. I've just really been gravitating towards that subgenre of horror lately. And Tommy Schuyler recommended The Baby, 1973, and he, he had me at 1973. Uh, that's my birth year. But also, I just love that particular time frame of cinema, I, I, you know, like 72, 71. Uh, there's been a lot of really great movies, especially 1972 for some reason. I've been noticing a lot of great movies come out in 72, especially like Jallo films. But um, I saw the trailer for The Baby and immediately I was like, that's the one. True Baby, life was not a giant playpen. It was a living hell. Baby doesn't walk. Baby doesn't talk. I wanted to face you one more time to tell you that you're sick. You're the one who needs help, not baby. It's just weird enough. The production value is quite high for a movie that's this daring and this weird. And, and funny enough, the movie's PG. And if you watch this movie, there's no way you would guess that this was PG. Uh, and I did talk about this when I did like Looker. By the way, I get constant comments still on Looker 1981 and how that movie was PG. And then if it came out in this day and age, there's no way. It would be rated R immediately. Uh, same thing with The Baby. It just deals with really weird and heavy subject matter. But it's a fine movie and very well acted as well. Very well directed by Ted Post, who went on to direct Magnum Force. One of the Dirty Harry movies. And also, real quick, you'll notice I finally painted my backdrop. You don't see too much of it in the frame here. You can see it back there with the, I spit on, I spit on your grave post. You can see some, some of the blue around there. And uh, definitely uh, behind me where the Michael Myers is and the Darth Vader. Uh, I finally painted the whole room blue. I'll put out like some B-roll here so you can see it. But I love it. It looks so much better. So it, It's moodier. And uh, I, I actually had to light my masks back there. Uh, with blue instead of red like I, I used to do because it just it just pops better. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. So anyway, let's get on to this review for The Baby. Now, let me give you a quick plot synopsis here. Um, there is this family of uh, women, the mother, and she's got two daughters, and then she has a 21-year-old son who still acts like a baby. When you watch the, the like the trailer for this movie, you would swear, oh, this must be like a comedy or something like that, or maybe even a dark comedy. And it's not even really played out like a comedy at all, even though, you know, just from a visual standpoint, looking at a grown man in diapers and quite well, actually, acting like a baby, it just rings comedy gold. And these days, that's exactly what genre this movie would be portrayed in. But no. There's a reason why he's stuck at this uh, growth level. Uh, I guess a variety of reasons, and you might even come to, up to your own conclusions because the movie doesn't really spell out everything. It's you know assumed from the viewer that he is mentally challenged, but also if you watch how the mother treats the child along the way, and even the sisters, they go out of their way to stunt his growth instead of trying to progress it. And there is this um, caseworker that comes in by the name of Anne, and she takes a particular interest in this child, even though it's an adult. She sees um, the, I guess, neglect that he is having, even though this is a family that lives in a pretty nice home, you know? So there's definitely some like juxtaposition there in terms of the living style and the characters. And so as the movie goes along, Anne goes out of her way to save the baby. 
to get him out of this harmful environment because she believes that he can progress and he can grow uh, mentally. Now the baby has these two sisters, Jermaine and Alba. They seem a little bit immature in nature as well. They still, you know, seem like teenagers, even though I think they might be in their 20s in this movie, or at least the actresses are. But, you know, there's a couple scenes where one of them, uh, Alba, she actually has a cattle prod because right after the baby showed a little progression when Anne was testing it, he comes into the house and the mother and, um, and Alba are actually beating the baby. So there's definitely some scenes of abuse that might be a little bit triggering in this movie for some, but I think it's necessary to show the environment that the baby is in. The mother, Mrs. Wadsworth, played by Ruth Roman, you're definitely going to get um, like Mommy Dearest vibes from her. She's a very strong woman. No, nobody takes my baby anywhere without me. Uh, she will not be walked over whatsoever. She holds these nice dinner parties uh, for people, for her guests. Uh, but she definitely calls the shots throughout this. There's even one scene where she gets quite violent with one of the, uh, the characters in the movie. One thing I definitely noticed about this film thematically is that it deals with abandonment. You know, the mother in this movie, the father left before the baby was uh, even born. Throughout the movie, you're going to notice that there are characters, women, um, that have dealt with abusive men in, the, in their past. And I think that theme plays a heavy part in this movie, and it'll definitely be noticeable by the time you get to the end of the movie. It's a conversation piece. I'm gonna even say it, and I mean this in the best way. If this movie came out today, it would be considered woke. And this is a 50-year-old movie. Uh, but I think maybe this is an example of woke being a positive thing for a movie that remains to be seen. Uh, you know, there's always a debate when it comes to woke content, especially these days, it's always considered a bad thing. But I think the term itself is meant to be a positive thing, uh, an awakening. And um, I think given the time frame, early 1970s and what women were going through back then, which is far different than what they're going through now, I think, I think stories like this are warranted. But character-wise, I definitely have to uh, applaud David Manzi, who played the baby. You will get a combination of emotions when you watch him. You'll get sadness. Uh, you will get shock. Maybe a little bit of laughter here and there. But his performance is just so on point with how a, an actual baby would act that it's a little jarring. And you cannot take your eyes off of it. I'd even, I'd even say the scenes of the baby... Um, are quite scene-stealing, and that's what the movie revolves around. But I think his performance is like pivotal to this movie because without um, a really strong and committed and dedicated performance like he gives in this, it would just fall on its face. It really would. I think you actually believe that it's a baby, you know, as you're watching the movie. It's just a very profound and committed performance. Really, all the performances in this movie are intoxicating. The set design is intoxicating. The fact that it's set in 1973 when you're looking at all the, uh, the old cars driving around in the background. I just love that stuff. I love these types of films. Hell, even the, the actors in this movie, the characters, they act differently than characters acted today. These are people that are, they're probably passed on by this, by this point. And if they haven't been, they're, they're you know, their grandparent age and uh, I find that really interesting. You know, you look at characters that are so young and full of life, like the daughters in this movie, and they're beautiful. I guess it just reminds you of how fast life can go by. And I don't mean to get a little somber here for you, but uh, I'm finding as I get older in age, because I just turned 50, uh, I'm finding myself going back even further and further and looking at cinema from that age, you know, from the 60s and 70s. And I'm, I'm even going back to like the 50s with some of the stuff I've been watching. And it wasn't even planned, it just, it just happens. Aside from all that, the thing that I loved about this movie so much was just how unique and creative it was. One can't help but question, could a movie like this be made today? Absolutely not. In this day and age, and I don't say it's like controversial or anything. Although, yeah, I guess it would be controversial, especially for the final act, which turns sort of into like a slasher movie territory. And there's even like a twist ending, which I won't spoil because I'm sure most of you haven't seen this movie. I thought long and hard about this. Should I actually do a spoiler review for this movie uh, or just talk spoilers? Because I usually do that with catalog titles, 
And if I'm doing like a, like I say, a, a review for like Lost Boys, I'll talk spoilers for days because we've all seen Lost Boys. But for a movie like this, I, I would say 2% of my audience might have seen it. So uh, I'm not going to talk spoilers. And it's on Tubi and you have to watch this movie. I find it so refreshing, especially when compared to like movies that come out today. But I can't stress enough how great the ending is. And it's one of those endings that will completely change your thought process for the entire movie. It's, it's what I would call a, a pulling the rug out type ending. Definitely giving this movie a high purchase worthy. I can't stop thinking about it. Thank you so much, Tommy Schuyler, for requesting this review. Um, I did jot down a few other requests on the Instagram pics that I plan on reviewing and they will get shout outs as well. Uh, but this is going to be an ongoing series. This is the first of many. And uh, it, it's, you know, it's a new year. And I'm always trying to come up with some kind of new series for my channel. And, uh, you know, the sky's the limit. I still love doing this so much because of you wonderful people. You guys make this what it is. So, The Baby, 1973. Check it out, please. Anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think of The Baby when you watch it. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day. And on Fridays, we do few for Fridays. Follow me at Rum Dums on my social support me on Patreon. Buy me a coffee. And you guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Rum Dum out.